The steampunk crossover has a part two. Let's begin. Welcome back to another episode, guys. Let's talk about what we got last week. So last week we got the big season 25 essence three with the fantastic S tier skin for Dreamwitch called Messenger, but it's actually not called that. It's actually called Envoy. Oh, I don't know. It's a bit confusing, but it's a very fancy skin indeed. She has legs. We also got an A tier skin for Prospector called Mining Director that most people don't like. And we've got the A tier skin for Entomologist, Professor of Zoology and Botany. I'm pretty sure that everyone really wants the entomologist skin along with this new essence we also got the orpheus game week two event where if you participate in the event you can get novelist speed tier skin orpheo we also got the orpheos game mode mini game come out this game mode is a bit of a weird one as i predicted it was very very wordy and i played it on the first day of release and i'm not a big fan of it there are some people that really really love it people that have played similar games before it seems like a lot of people are going into the game mode and don't know what's going on such as me and there is no real motivation for anyone to actually talk, talk and everyone just skips their turn and you can never work out who the bad person is. It's a little bit of a shame, not really sure why Nettie's chose this game mode. Along with this new game mode, they added a new option, a new function to the game that's actually quite a big one and this is the voice function. They added the voice chat in custom rooms, duo hunters, blackjack and other special modes I believe such as tarot mode and stuff like this but only on mobile and this is something that I was a little bit angry about because they've essentially now nerfed players that play PC heavily. This voice function is also available, of course, in the new Orpheus game mode if you want to use it as well. I know that a lot of people are talking about some weird experiences from the voice function mode, but it's a bit weird. In the store, we got the Echoes of the Past package that contains the S tier skin for a little girl called Eurydice. Don't know how you pronounce it. I didn't check. And an A tier accessory called Melody for little girl. And it's a really, really nice accessory. I've seen quite a lot of people using the S tier skin. I do think it's very, very fancy and it looks really good in game. You can of course purchase them separately as well for fragments and for echoes too. In the spyglass store they added a new B tier skin for Mad Eyes called Mana Manager that's connected to season 25 essence 3. It's actually a really nice B tier if you like Mad Eyes at all. It's available for 100 spyglasses so it's kind of worth it. If you're spending your echoes and you keep on recharging then you might be getting closer to a new recharge reward because they've just added two new recharge rewards. If you recharge 250,000 they've added a new A tier accessory red ink that gives you like special effects above your head when you use an emote. They added the new Dionite portrait frame and a portrait effect and you also get 3000 inspirations. If you spend 300,000 echoes or you recharge 300,000 echoes, you don't need to spend them I guess, you will receive an S tier piece of furniture, a chat bubble effect, a new one that's like a golden one, a dynamic label frame that just makes you look pretty fancy, an S tier label and 5000 inspirations. So there are lots of rewards if you spend lots of money in this game. Mini event that they did last week, kind of not in the game, it's outside of the game, they did the April Fools event on April 1st called the Shining on the Elitist Manor. I didn't participate because it's a mobile thing, you have to scan uh, on your phone to be able to play it or do it or whatever I just didn't have time to do it I was busy working on a video to a different store to the Koa store that's to do with the Call of the Abyss tournament that's going on they added a new accessory that you could possibly purchase if you have enough points that is an accessory for batter it's an A tier accessory its effects are kind of minimal it has like a bluey glowy effect when you use the batting ball and hit a hunter with it and it also makes you glow blue instead of gold when you're using the rampage mode they gave us 10 free memory spheres at the beginning of this essence and they also removed the escape button from ranked matches. As for some adjustments they did some minor adjustments for Nightwatch where they adjusted Nightwatch's attacks when he's holding someone with balloons. They adjusted Embalmer's rebirth shield to be effective against hot wax. They improved the description of some characters abilities when Mad Eyes, Sculptor or Clerk use aerial view abilities within the range of a painter's painting their abilities will be cancelled and they'll be attracted towards the paintings. I'm not really sure how this kind of works. Let's talk about what we're getting this week. This week we're getting Mad Eyes one skin that apparently looks quite a lot like me. It looks very very fancy. It's actually a really really nice Mad Eyes skin. It's two nice Mad Eyes skins in a row Nettie's. Wow that's amazing. Finally showing some love to Mad Eyes. They do sometimes give him B tiers but not A tiers. We'll also be getting the Ivory Tower skin for Prisoner this week that is a nice-ish skin for Prisoner. Nothing super special. Prisoner has better skins in my opinion but this is something that is pretty cheap to get if you want to spend your echoes on that. Now what else we 
we could be getting this week is kind of up in the air. Netties likes to throw random adjustments at us sometimes. It's possible we might be getting the adjustments, the big slur of adjustments that they've added to the test server that I will be talking about a little bit later on in this video. It's possible we'll be getting them this week. We might be getting them two weeks from now. It's a little bit unsure. We also might be getting some other rewards in the store or maybe a mini event. I don't really know. But as far as we know, we only have two things guaranteed as far as I can tell that are these two skins. Let's talk about some leaks, some rumors, and what Netties has added to the test server. So first of all, we've just had Netties announce that there's going to be a part two for Kamati Moon and we know what the skins look like. The Kamati Moon is the steampunk crossover. We already had the BQ Arc Duchess skin that was really fancy and the Paper Wing skin for Toy Merchant. Really great skins. We've now seen that Mercenary is getting an 80 skin called Cannoneer and it's quite a nice skin. I might be in it really, really, really good, really fancy Mercenary skin. Mercenary may have too many skins in my personal personal opinion and I think a lot of people would agree with me whatever they have to do it that's fine but the one that I'm most excited about and I think a lot of people are too is the Soul Weaver 80 skin called the Renewer this skin looks really really cool fantastic in my opinion really weird vibe to it the fact that she's got these like little glass monocle thingies all over her face does that mean there's going to be a part three I think it does as we have seen in the original trailer that there were more characters kind of uh kind of hinted at so it might be a part three I'm looking forward to that too we also had some leaks for a different crossover, the Angels of Death crossover. This leak comes from IDV Curiosity over on Twitter. I always try to shout them out. They do some great work for leaks and stuff for Identity 5, so go and check them out on Twitter if you haven't already. They've kind of said that they expect Professor to be getting a skin for this crossover, and the skin is going to be Daniel Dickens or Danny. I don't know any of these characters, but you guys probably do if you've watched the anime. Coordinator is going to be getting a skin called Catherine Ward or Kathy. Be. Just this week, or technically last week, Netty's added some of the adjustments that are going to be coming at the end of the season. They added some new things to the test server, and they've adjusted some of the numbers from the initial kind of announcement they made quite a while back. First of all, let's talk about these adjustments as we go along. They're first adjusting Prospector. They've increased his magnet cooldown time to six seconds. Not really sure what this means. I'm not really much of a Prospector player, but I think the normal cooldown is much longer than six seconds. So it must be like the time to be able to to use magnets between each other with if you have multiple swans stacked i'm not really sure when there are other survivors within 50 meters of you the stun time of the hunter and also prospector if you're both pushed into something is reduced by 50 percent that's half the time that you're going to be stunned both you and the hunter that's a major change it doesn't even say how many survivors it just says full stop if there's any other survivor within 50 meters you'll get your stun reduced by half antiquarian is set to get a change i also want to make a good point here that these changes aren't fine Final. These are things that have been added to the test server. They're going to be changed and numbers will be changed before the official release. But this is probably more or less what you're going to see in the real game. Antiquarian's slowdown effect that she gives the hunter when she uses her mechanical flute on them is reduced from 25% down to 15%. They also reduced the stun time from 1.2 seconds down to 1 second. So this means that the hunter will be slightly stunned less. Mechanics dull decoding speed is now reduced by 10%. I believe it was originally 110% decoding, now it's only a 100% decoder, so it's essentially just another player instead of a decoder player. Prisoner's shock recharge cooldown will be increased from 60 seconds to 75 seconds. Female dancer's slowdown effect of her music box from the first setting, two or three, so one, two or three music boxes, is now reduced from 15, 25 and 35%, that was the maximum was 35% slowdown for the hunter, now has been changed to 12%, 21%, 30%, so it's 5% less at max stacks and 3% less on everything else. Explorer has been adjusted so that his password page progress will be increased during digging. I have no idea what this means. I haven't seen any videos covering any of this so I don't really know what that means for Explorer but I'm assuming that's actually maybe a buff for him. I don't really know. Undead's frequency conversion ability that his ability to be able to change the location of dungeon has been shortened by one second. His energy charge cooldown is the ability to be able to give him 50% or remove 50 percent of his energy instantly. The cooldown is reduced from 45 seconds to 35 seconds, so that's a tiny bit of a buff. The survivor's crawling speed boost that they get when they're on the ground when going against undead has been reduced from 200% to 
100%. That means they won't be crawling super, super fast on the ground anymore. Evo Reptilians received quite a strong buff now. They've removed the leap height limit for Evo Reptilians, so you'll be able to leap as high as you possibly can, I guess. And he can now also leap when there's something above him. Usually when you play Evo Reptilian, you can't jump when there's something above your head. It just won't let you do it. They've removed that now, so you'll be able to jump even if you're in an enclosed space. They've made it so the lethal crash, that is the slam damage effect, is now not a single hit damage, but an area damage so that means it might be able to damage multiple survivors now they also increase the upper limit of the air sensitivity setting i think that means you might be able to possibly buff the sensitivity just a tiny bit more i'm not really sure gamekeeper has also received quite a big buff his slowdown effect that he gets while he's kind of charging up his hook in the air you know swing it around he does actually get slowed by using this hook around him has been reduced from 10 percent to five percent so he moves a tiny bit faster while spinning this hook in the air when one of his hooks hits a target that's using flywheel or it hits a magician illusion or a bee swarm from entomologist instead of it counting as him missing a hit it will now pull him towards that object and he'll be able to use his hook again so it doesn't cancel the ability anymore they've improved his trap placing judgment and they've also made it so that the traps will be placed in the direction of his camera and not the position of the character itself so that means it'll be much easier to place traps and they've also created a new visible boundary where you'll be able to place your traps when around a chair so you're not allowed to place traps around when there's a chaired survivor um, there is a certain radius that you're just not allowed to put traps around now you'll be able to see that radius so that's cool if he misses one of his chains and it just hits the thin air the cooldown will now be reduced by three seconds so i believe it was originally 13 or 14 seconds cooldown if you miss one of your hooks now it's only 11 or 10 i believe wu chang is also getting some strong buffs that might push him up the metal list a tiny bit more the control time of the wavering soul ability is increased by 0.2 seconds so this is when someone gets hit by the bell effect they have this calibration apparently it will take 0.2 seconds longer before you get that calibration why is this important it's because survivors can now not use abilities whilst they are waiting for this calibration or use objects either. After Wu Chang teleports, the speed of his interaction speed, such as breaking pallets or vaulting windows, for example, has been increased by 25% for five seconds. So he'll get a faster vaulting speed after he teleports. So let's say you teleport to the wrong side of a window, survivor just vaulted it, and now you have to watch them go off into the distance. Well, now you'll be able to follow them a little bit faster because you'll be able to vault that window a tiny bit faster than you could before. If using this soul siphon ability, the one that kind of makes you move really, really fast as you siphon people's soul, I guess that's what the it's called. <laughs> if it exceeds 70% of usage, so you use it up to 70% of its max, you can now end the ability. This means that you can use it mostly for movement speed now, instead of having to use it for the ability of the Soul Siphon. They also adjusted the Persona Web. I won't talk about the specifics here, but they did nerf Weber's Law. They also nerfed Herd Behavior. They buffed the Addiction Hunter trait, and they adjusted Control Freak. I wouldn't really call it a buff, but they should be on the screen right now, or you probably have already seen them on the screen. So check those ones out. They also adjust the excitement so that excitement will now protect the hunter against music box effects and also antiquarian's slowdown effect. So you'll be able to just remove those completely. With all of these changes for Wu Chang Gamekeeper, we might be able to see one of these hunters kind of get much stronger in the meta. Maybe even Eva Reptilian might become a little bit more used. What do you think? Tell me down in the comments below. And with all of these changes to hunters, you might want to see how hunters hitboxes compare against each other. Then you should definitely watch this video that I've got here up on the screen.